I know that it's not a competition, but if it were, I think I would have won. What I'm holding in my hands is the largest vial of cesium ever shown on video. This golden metal is the most reactive metal on earth. It burns when it's exposed to air and explodes in contact with water. The only vial getting close in terms of the mass of cesium is a 130 gram vial shown by the channel of Smart Elements, a commercial seller, which means it is, contrary to mine, not homemade. But this vial is not only massive, it's also absolutely pure. As you can see, the cesium does not stick to the glass at all. This is the result of a long journey and countless hours of work. So I hope you enjoy this video, in which I will show you how I made this beauty. To get enough cesium for my distillation, I isolated cesium from cesium chloride in two batches. If you want to know how this process works, check out my other videos about the cesium production. The yield from my first batch was 85%. Not the best yield I've ever had, but still very good. It was very interesting to see some dendritic crystals forming on the relatively impure cesium. I made a second batch and collected the cesium in the same Schlenk flask. The second time the yield was only 80%. Combined I had around 146 grams of cesium. The next step would be to transfer it into my still and redistill it two times. I sadly lost some footage, so this is a reshoot to explain to you what I was doing. I first transferred the cesium into my still and sealed the still by melting off the glass tube that was used to transfer the cesium. I then connected the still to my vacuum system with this stainless steel flexible vacuum tube. And if you've seen my last video about the flame working, you have seen that I connected a KF flange to my still. And I did that exactly for this purpose. Because as you can see, the flange at the end of this stainless steel tube is KF2. So with my still connected, I can use this here. This is new. This is my system consisting of two high vacuum valves, one at the bottom and one at the top. The bottom one is connected to my vacuum pump and the top one is connected via a tube to my argon cylinder. And this way I can flush the system with argon. So what I would do is I would open the vacuum valve, pull a vacuum on the system, close the vacuum valve, open the argon valve to flush the system with argon and repeat that several times. I did it at least four times to flush the system completely with argon. The next thing I did was to open the vacuum valve to pull a vacuum on the system. And then I used a heat gun and a tube out of aluminum foil around my vial and heated the vial at 250 degrees Celsius for one hour to desorb any moisture at the surface of the glass. After I did that, I started the distillation. And from the distillation, I have some awesome footage. So let's get on with the video. So the heat gun was now running for over an hour while vacuum was supplied to the still. And the pressure didn't change at all. It stayed at 1.36 Pascal or 0.01 millibars. And I'm going to start the distillation now. Uh, if you're interested, the heat gun was turned up to a temperature of 250 degrees Celsius um, in the course of an hour. This has to be one of the most nerve-wracking things I've done in a while. On the left side of the round bottom flask you can see the glass tube that was used to transfer the cesium and later sealed off. I will now show you some beautiful shots of the first distillation. If you want to skip that, you can just click on the next chapter.
It took me about two hours, but it's finally done. All of the cesium has been distilled from this flask into this. And just like I did last time, I didn't distill over all of the cesium because I want to make sure that any impurities with a higher, higher boiling point stay behind in my first flask. And before I can continue to distill it in my final vial, comes the next crucial step with a lot of potential to go wrong, and that is to seal the still at this point and disconnect the first flask. So that's what I'm going to do now. I am preheating the area to make sure the glass does not crack when I use my propane oxygen flame. Here you can see me flame annealing the glass. I am basically letting the glass cool down slowly to reduce internal stress. Okay, that worked great. We have now disconnected the first flask under vacuum and now it's time to distill it a final time into my vial. The cesium just looks beautiful even after the first distillation. The surface is absolutely perfect. You will now see some astonishing shots of the second distillation. Again, if you want to skip, you can click on the next chapter. Okay, I distilled everything into the vial and as you can see it's awesome, there's not a trace of oxidation on this flask, only at the bottom there's a little bit of impurities left, I don't know what this is, maybe some cesium hydroxide or cesium oxide, but the walls are absolutely pristine, there's no trace of oxidation and look at the surface of the cesium here, it, it just looks it's unbelievably, yeah. One thing I uh, realized is that this piece here was definitely too short. I got a little bit of cesium in my KF connector here, and that, which means I have to clean this uh, stainless steel hose. Um, but that's not that big of a deal. And it's not a lot of cesium that got in here. Most of it condensed right here and dripped into the vial. So the last step is to seal the vial right here and then we are done.
I don't show it here, but I again gently preheated the glass with my normal torch before starting to seal the vial. The vial was sealed off and I again flame annealed the glass to reduce internal stress. After disconnecting the stainless steel hose, you can see that there is basically no cesium that got into the hose. There is a tiny amount that condensed on the walls and reacted when I let air into the system. But yeah, it's, it's a tiny amount. Looking in the glass flange, you can see that there is more cesium inside. There is a little puddle right here. But compared to the amount I was distilling, it is an absolute minute amount, so yeah. I'm now going to score the glass here to break it, so I'm able to clean the glassware. That's not a glass cutter. That's a glass cutter. And yes, I know water and cesium is a bad combination, but I'm just using a few drops to crack the glass. And I'm keeping all of the glass pieces because I want to weigh them afterwards, so I can calculate the exact yield of my ampule or my vial. I think they're called vials when they are sealed. What I like to do before letting the cesium that is left over react with isopropyl alcohol is to introduce some oxygen and the oxygen starts to oxidize the cesium so the reaction with, with the isopropyl alcohol is more tame. To determine the yield I will weigh all of the glass pieces including my vial with the cesium and then I can subtract the weight of the still before I used it so just the empty still with the empty vial and this way I know the yield of the cesium in my vial. I even kept the small piece I sealed off in the beginning. So 236.08 grams. And now I will weigh my vial with the cesium. Two hundred and forty-seven grams. Yeah, two hundred and forty-seven point zero two grams. By subtracting the weight of the still before the distillation, we can calculate that the vial contains one hundred and thirty-nine grams of cesium, which corresponds to seventy-four milliliters, which makes this the largest vial of cesium recorded on video. Since we started the distillation with one hundred and forty-five point nine one grams of cesium. The yield of the redistillation was around 95%. Most of the cesium was left behind in my Schlenk flask and in the first flask of the still. Based on the fact that the cesium does not wet the glass at all, the purity is probably higher than 99.99%. As always, I want to thank my awesome community and especially my patrons for supporting me. If you like my videos, consider subscribing. I am happy about every new subscriber. And if you want to support me on Patreon, I would greatly appreciate it. I really hope you liked today's video. Have a great day and thank you a lot for watching.